This week on Maker Update, a robot dog for attacking poison ivy, spray on LEDs, Festo's robot bird, a pie powered pet feeder, forging a sword, and mapping LEDs on a mask. Hey, I'm Donald Bell. Welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're doing well, staying cool, staying safe. I'm just really glad to be getting better sleep. It's been like a month of fireworks going off every single night around here. It's finally come to an end and I'm really grateful for that. I have a lot of cool stuff to share with you, so let's get started with the project of the week. On YouTube, Science-ish walks you through his process for creating this remote-controlled robot dog he designed to kill the poison ivy growing in his yard. The secret weapon is a five volt pump hooked up to this cute little googly-eyed reservoir face. For these demos, it's filled up with water, but you could fill it up with weed killer, but you could also just keep the water in there and actually have your dog help you keep the plants alive. It's up to you. The robot is based around an Arduino Uno with four servos and a 3D printed frame and legs. With the remote control, you can have the robot lie down, stand up, turn, walk forwards or backwards, and of course, leak. The mobility of the robot leaves a lot to be desired. In fact, if you're gonna build a gardening robot, you're probably better off with something like a rover design. Still, I just love that this guy made a whizzing robot it's a feature that I'll seriously consider adding to all my robots moving forward. Now for some news. Through the Core 77 blog, I learned about a unique process from the Bristol Interaction Group for adding lights to your 3D printed projects by spraying them on. The headline here is a little deceiving because spray on lights makes it sound like some kind of convenient process, but what's actually going on here is that the object is printed partially in conductive filament that acts as an electrode with basic filament acting as an insulator. Sprayed on layers are then carefully built up to create the LED light effect, and the whole thing has to plug into power, just like anything else. It's a neat idea, especially for making round or uneven surfaces that seem to magically emit their own light. The video kind of hints at this, but it could be a really cool technique to work into cosplay props. In other news, check out this new video from the German robotics manufacturer Festo. It's an ornithopter drone called Bionic Swift, and it flies around just like a real bird. Each bird weighs in at just 42 grams. One motor is used for flapping and the other two motors are actuating the wings and spreading out the synthetic feathers to control the steering. What's even more impressive is that these are autonomous robots. There's no human at the controls. Using GPS and wireless networking between birds, Festo has been able to get five of them flying at once in an enclosed space. By constantly reporting on their position and trajectory, they're able to avoid each other and stay in the air for up to seven minutes. It's incredible. Now for more projects. On Instructables, I found this automatic pet feeder by Gillian13. This design is based on a Raspberry Pi, an LCD screen, an ultrasonic sensor to detect your pet, a stepper driver, and a load cell to report back on the weight and the food placed in the bowl. There are a lot of automatic pet feeder projects out there. This one is clever, though you could argue it's a little overkill. What's interesting is that the core of this project is this 3D printed auger system by George Sianakis on Thingiverse. This design uses a NEMA 7 stepper motor to precisely drive the auger. There's a feeder chute at the top, and aside from the motor and a few screws, everything is 3D printed. I've been thinking of making an auger system like this either as an ice dispenser for my cocktail robot or as a candy dispenser for trick-or-treaters. Either way, I'm sure I'd have to adjust the sizing and the spacing of the design, but all of the SDLs are here, and it seems like a good place to start. For something completely different, The Essential Craftsman takes a break from building an entire home from scratch to show you how to make your own sword from carbon steel. I'll be honest, of all the maker disciplines, blacksmithing is pretty far off my radar, and in terms of practical weapons and self-defense, swords are even further off my radar. But as a video, it's a real treat to watch this sword get smashed and carved and polished into existence. In the end, whether you're making a robot or a sword or making a pizza, it comes down to process, tools, and technique. If you like seeing cool things take shape without a whole lot of showing off, check out this video. Now it's time for some tools and tips. First up, with the new month comes a new Adafruit edition of Maker Update. Tyler Weingartner shows off some great new projects, including this RGB matrix slot machine by the Ruiz brothers. Check it out. On Tested, Adam Savage revisits his spiel about why he likes dial calipers over digital ones. This time though, he adds a twist. 
Instead of six inch calipers, he's changed things up to a more compact four inch version that fits better in a shop apron. I had no idea these existed, but if you find yourself rarely venturing past a few inches with your calipers, you might find this smaller option more handy. For another handy tool, I talked to Jordan Bunker about these magnetic task lights. They're advertised as lamps that you can attach to a sewing machine, but Jordan has been using them on his drill press or any tool where some extra light can help him out. They're $16 for a pair and they come with adhesive mounting discs that make it easy to attach them to anything. On YouTube, Scott Marley explains how to create a custom LED matrix on an irregular shape. For his example, he has some LED strip weaving all over this mask. By using the fast LED XY map generator, he's able to translate an animation pattern used for a perfect grid of LEDs to work on an irregular shape without losing the proportions or the pattern of the animation. It's a great trick to know about. Also on YouTube, Thomas Sandlatterer has been piecing together a great series for anyone getting started with 3D printing. His latest is called When Things Go Wrong. And I think it's essential viewing, even if you've been printing for years, you'll learn what to watch out for and the most likely solutions for common problems. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video introducing two new product lines being distributed by DigiKey, iFixit and Tube Depot. I've had great experiences with both companies, Tube Depot for replacing vacuum tubes on my guitar amps, and iFixit for their great little toolkits. As someone who's both into electronics repair and guitar gear, seeing both of these brands on DigiKey put a smile on my face. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Leave me an angry paragraph about how this show has gone downhill ever since I started talking about whizzing robot dogs. You can get on the email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this whole show possible. Next week, we have Sophie Wong guest hosting again, so look forward to that. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.